What's going on guys, Anthony from Chronometer Check here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Orient Neo 70s Panda Dial Chronograph. Now I've spent a lot of time kind of oogling and ogling over this watch and just Panda Dial Chronographs in general. As you can see I bought quite a few. Now they are kind of hard to find in the more budget range. But there are a few that exist and are pretty good value for the price. So of course the Panda Dial Chronograph is a configuration that has been around for years and years, ranging all the way back from the 60s and probably even beyond that. They are very beautiful, but kind of hard to find in the lower price bracket. So I kind of did a little bit of a hunt. I uh, happened to maybe even went a little bit overboard and picked up, you know, a couple of different Panda dials just because I think it is probably my favorite variation of a watch. I definitely did some research and, you know, wanted to try to find some alternatives in the lower budget and the Orient Neo 70s Panda is one that kept popping up. So let's get into it. One thing first, wrist check. Today I am wearing my Seiko Sarb 033. Of course, I'm sure like probably at least half of you guys own this. Um, if not, at least half of you guys have considered owning it. It's a beautiful watch. I don't really need to say too much about it that hasn't been said. I am wearing this it on this kind of ostentatious, um, a little bit fancy lizard, genuine lizard strap from Amazon. It's okay. It's a good strap for the money. I think it was like 25 bucks at the time. It's definitely not a great strap. It's not super amazing, but uh, for genuine lizard for 25 bucks, not bad. I don't like that it tapers down to 16 from 20 millimeters to 16 millimeters, kind of a bummer. And actually underneath where the keepers are, there is more snake skin that's kind of uncomfortable against your skin. So it's a cool material and it is genuine snake skin. And actually this snake skin, as far as the band itself, is actually pretty good. You know, it's not like, it, it does flake like a, like a genuine snake, but at the same time, it's not like flaking off. So about this watch in particular, one of the things that really kind of blew me away from the second that I opened the box was the case finishing and just the overall kind of quality that went into the the watch itself. So this is something that really all the pictures in the world and all the videos in the world, in my opinion, it's really hard to get a sense of that, how the watch kind of shines and pops. And the reason for that is Orient is one of those brands, one of the few brands I think in the lower price bracket, maybe Orient, Seiko, Citizen, there are probably a couple others that really put a level of attention into detail and the quality of the finish and such in their lower end watches. Of course, in many higher end brands, you do see some amazing finish that blow this out of the water, but for the lower price, it's really hard to beat. So you do have these this completely kind of flat, deep brushed finish along near the lugs and around the case, but on the bezel is very, very polished along with the sides and the sides of the bracelet. So, and like I said, for this lower price bracket, this watch costs between two to $300, depending on where you find it, when you find it, et cetera. It's really good for the price. Done very, very well. I would say, honestly, I'm not gonna compare it to the level of the Seiko SAR, but it's almost there. It is a little bit cheaper, of course, but it's almost as good as the Seiko SAR. Now it's not, it's not as good as the SAR, but almost. And there are, of course, a couple of other things that kind of make this a little bit lower tier in terms of overall quality than the Sarb line. But of course, it does have its own merits as well. So this is not a comparison from this watch versus the Sarb, but just to explain to you, um, comparing it to a watch that a lot of you guys might own or know a lot about, the quality is good. It's definitely there. Now, as far as the dial itself, you do have another thing that's pretty deceiving, and that is the color of the dial, it actually kind of looks kind of like a stark white in a lot of pictures, but in reality, it's more of like a creamy, a milky cream, you could say, or an off-white, um, whereas the outer chapter ring right around it is actually silver. So that's kind of an interesting contrast right there and kind of right away makes the watch super unique in that you rarely see this kind of configuration, even on other Panda dial watches, even on other you know, other emulations of the same design, etc., And it does have a darker outer ring, uh, a darker chapter ring with Arabic numerals for the minute markers. Now I'm not actually sure, to be perfectly honest with you, if the chapter ring on the outside and the subdials, if they're black or a dark navy blue, I am not joking. I'm actually colorblind when it comes to super, super dark navy blue and black. Um, and even really dark brown. So I'm not 100% positive. I think it's a dark navy blue, but anyway, it looks really gorgeous. I think it complements the creamy, milky dial very well. But it, keep in mind, if you do want like a stark white dial, that's not what this is. Now, as far as dimensions, it is a 42 millimeter 
watch, which in, in terms of diameter, which for this retro 70s styled watch is kind of a little bit large in my opinion. And this is one of my few gripes with this watch is the size. If it was maybe two millimeters smaller, I think it would be absolutely perfect. I do have a seven inch wrist. Let me throw it on for you real quick. So here's the Orient Neo 70s on my seven inch wrist. I think it wears really, really well and I think it's perfectly fine. I get away with it. It does have a 48 millimeter lug to lug, so it's not that large that it kind of tips over and does have a very nicely curved shape to the lugs that really just hug your wrist perfectly. It's a very comfortable and well-fitting watch, but for my taste, it's a little bit bigger than I would like. I do like watches around 40 millimeters or under, so this is my personal taste. Now, if you like watches that are a little bigger or if you have a wrist bigger than mine, I think this watch is gonna fit you absolutely perfectly but just something to keep in mind. Now, it's not a thin watch by any means. It's almost 12 millimeters thick, but that's not super thick either. So not a super dressy piece, but also it is a, it's kind of like a sporty watch in terms of dimensions and sizing with a little bit more class and uh, a little bit more vintage styling. So I think it's kind of the best of both worlds in a sense. Now we do have applied hour markers that again, I think are done very, very well for the price. They look great. They do have a, different angles that hit the light, you know, in a different way. And of course you do have the Orient logo at the top. Some people hate it, some people love it. Personally, I have no problem with the Orient logo whatsoever. I think it's it's fine, it's interesting enough that I don't mind it being there. You know, I'd rather it be there than not be there and just read the text. And of course it does say Orient and underneath it says chronograph in script, which I think is kind of another interesting stylistic choice. I think that is kind of another thing that makes the watch look a little bit more quote unquote classy along with the cream dial as opposed to sporty if it maybe didn't have that and had more of a white dial. But again, I think it's awesome. I definitely don't think it detracts from it as a sports watch in any way. So I think overall, one of the things that sets this watch apart from say the Alpha Daytona, you know, the Dan Henry line of of uh, chronograph watches and things like that is really the originality and uniqueness of the design. This is a completely, as far as I know at least, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe this is homaging uh, directly another watch. Of course, it does have many, many stylistic cues from popular and you know just super classic watches like the Rolex Paul Newman Daytona, of course, the whole bunch of other references, a bunch of Tag Heuer's, et cetera, that have this kind of 60s, 70s chronograph um, style. But at the same time, I think it's probably the most unique as far as the budget alternatives. Of course, it also does have a mecha course movement, which is supposedly in-house. I'm not actually entirely sure about that. I believe uh, another blogger, Two Broke Watch Knobs, did mention that it has exactly the same specifications as a Seiko Solar mecha course movement, even though in this one it is labeled as an Orient, and you know, Orient does do, do things in-house. And for this to be an in-house movement would be pretty cool and not completely unlikely, so I'm not exactly sure uh, which movement it is. Either way, Seiko movement, Orient movement, it's an awesome movement. It is a Mecha Quartz movement, solar powered with a six month power reserve charge. So, you know, you can't really beat that. Of course, that does mean it is a quartz watch, not a fully mechanical, but it is a hybrid mechanical, meaning it has the accuracy of a quartz watch, the long power reserve, the six hour power reserve. But you see, if I start the chronograph pusher, it does have a smooth sweeping second hand like a mechanical watch. Now it's not super smooth. I believe it's probably about 18,000 uh, beats per hour, but at least it does have the mechanical sweep, which is kind of nice. Now the subdial on the left you see here is actually where you see the ticking quartz second hand. So that's just the regular second hand. It does go up to 60 seconds, of course, and so that means the main second hand, the large one is the chronograph second hand to time things with the chronograph. The subdial on the right hand side is a 24 hour subdial. That means if you go to change the time, go to change the hour, the 24 hour clock actually changes to show you where it is. So um, personally, I think that's honestly one of the most useless subdials they could have had. But of course, the one use that it really does have is that it tells you whether you're on AM or PM without actually having to um, you know, change the time. One of the bottom is the 60 minute chronograph timer. Let's see if I could get a nice little close up for you. Let's move those hands out of the way. So yeah, the dial at the bottom is a 60 minute chronograph dial. Of course, that is pretty useful and much better than 30 minutes. In my opinion, of course, the longer the better. 
Um, if this 24 hour sub dial was maybe like a 24 hour chronograph counter, that'd be absolutely sick. I don't even know how many watches really have that or how common that is, but that would be pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, overall, just a really, really nice streamlined watch with, you know, very functional because of the court, the quartz movement, accuracy, power reserve, and also does have the nice added touch of the mechanical sweeping chronograph hand. Now, as far as the chronograph pushers themselves, they are pump pushers, which I like instead of having to screw down to constantly having to screw them up and down every time you want to use that. I found that annoying. Now, these are not the most satisfying to click because they are quartz. It's a quartz watch in essence. Um, so it's not the most satisfying. You don't get that sort of super clicky mechanical feel that you do with a fully mechanical chronograph like the Alpha Daytona. But at the same time, with this watch, you get a fully original design. This is pretty much an homage, or you could say a ripoff, depending on how you look at it. So yeah, not super satisfying to press, not super clicky, etc. Okay, so in order to use a chronograph, you have the button on the top right. That pusher there is to start or pause the chronograph. So I press it once to start it, and I can press it again to stop it anytime I want. Now, if to reset it back to zero, it's the button on the bottom right. Now you see how the second hand kind of turns back slowly? That means it is not a flyback chronograph. And that is, again, something that you do tend to get with mechanical watches like this, where it'll just snap back into place from wherever the second hand is back to the center. So again, these are kind of like the little flaws and the little things that you, you don't get with a mecha quartz movement that you would get with a mechanical chronograph like the Alpha or the Siegel 1963 that uses the same movement as the Alpha, or I should say the Alpha uses the same movement as the Siegel 1963 because it is a Siegel movement. Actually, one of the few flaws about this watch, in my opinion, is the date wheel. We see that over here in between the three and four o'clock position. There's a couple of things I actually don't like about it. So first of all, the fact that it's even there, I think this watch would look so much better without a date wheel. I, I don't really know the point in even having it there. I mean, I guess it is nice because it is a quartz watch. So it's like you kind of set it and forget it and the date will always be right there. So that is kind of nice. Um, but personally, I think it kind of just detracts from the watch in general. I don't really, I don't really want it on this watch personally. Um, but of course to each their own. Now it would have been nice if they did offer the option like on the Dan Henry watches, if they, if you could have it with or without the date but maybe some people like it. Now, as far as the date wheel itself, once it's there, I think it's a little bit too small. I think if you're gonna have it, at least make it you know, big enough. This isn't a small watch per se, it's a 42 millimeter watch. So if you are going to put it on the watch, at least make it big enough to be you know, just super legible, why not? I'm not huge, obviously, you don't want it like a Timex easy reader, but at least a little bigger I think would have been great. And also the fact that it's a white date wheel, contrasting with the creamy white dial, I think that's kind of, that bugs me a little bit because, I don't know, kind of ruins the the kind of, just the nice dial that they have going on. It just breaks it up a little bit and not in a good way, in my opinion. Um, and also the fact that, again, the number too small and the placement, I honestly, I don't have a problem with the placement. I just would have preferred it to not be there altogether. Now, let's get on to the bracelet. So this is one of the things about the watch that are kind of, uh, cost cutting and not so great in my opinion. Now it's an okay brace as far as looks. I think it looks great. It has the same brush texture as the, the case itself and it's brushed very, very well. Again, Orient does a great job at finishing, especially even in these lower price points. But as far as the quality of the bracelet, it's, it's very, uh, it's kind of jangly. It, it doesn't feel very solid or heavy or substantial. It does have, of course, a stamped clasp, which is again, not very desirable. It does have a pretty nice, I will say, pretty satisfying and kind of reassuring click that you don't feel like it's just gonna pop off at any time. Um, it does have a button for the deployment, but it's okay, it's nothing spectacular. Now, one of the things where this watch shines, in my opinion, is actually when changing out the bracelet because the bracelet is fine, okay, it looks cool. Um, 22 millimeter lug width, I think again, going back to the size of the watch, if the watch was maybe 40 millimeters, and the lug width was 20, and this was on 20 millimeter bracelet, I think that would have been awesome. Of course, it wouldn't have changed the quality of the bracelet and the hollow end links, etc. That all would stay the same, but I just think it would have been a better size. But anyway, when taking off the bracelet, that's when this watch really shines, in my opinion. This watch is an absolute strap monster, and I think it looks great on a huge variety of straps, and you could really have your pick. Now, I will probably do a separate video kind of showcasing a bunch of straps on this, but uh, basically my suggestion would be some kind of vintage inspired 
rally strap. So I've been wearing it a lot on this vintage rally style a brown leather racing strap. I think it just fits the theme of the watch perfectly, of course, very also vintage and racing inspired. And I think it just works so perfectly. Now the watch is 12 millimeters thick. So something with a little bit of thickness, I think suits the watch very well. You see the way it kind of follows the contour of the watch just near perfectly. And I think it just works so perfectly with the retro charm of this watch. And especially this kind of distressed brown that kind of patinas as you fold it. Oh man, I think this is a lovely combination. Now for something a little bit more classy and you know a little more dressy, of course, you can never go wrong with a black gator. Now, personally, I think I would prefer something with a little more padding. This is a little bit too dressy and thin of a, a strap for this watch. Does it work? Sure. But as far as preference, if you had your choice, I would say something with a little bit more padding. So maybe a watch that has at least three millimeters of thickness at the lug, I think it is probably the best. You do also have the option for a Milanese mesh bracelet, which again has kind of a vintage charm to it. And I think just works perfectly with this strap. I will probably make a, a separate video uh, showcasing a bunch of different straps because this video is already getting super long, uh, but yeah. So that's pretty much it guys, wrapping it up. And I will do, I want to do more in-depth comparisons as far as the budget Panda dial chronographs in the future. Cause I, you know, I have so many and I have owned them all as far as I know, and I want to share my thoughts. But yeah, as far as the Orient Neo 70s, it's a good watch for the money. It looks absolutely great if you want to watch in this size. Um, if you prefer a mechanical watch, obviously this is not the watch for you and your only real options are the Siegel 1963 Alpha Daytona Homage that uses the Siegel 1963 movement as far as budget panda dial chronographs that are mechanical. But of course, if you do want a, you don't care really too much about that or if the mechanical sweeping hand is enough for you, you're, you just really want kind of the look of a mechanical watch. Of course, the subdial over here does tick, but I think it's still an awesome watch. You get a nice, unique design. It's absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. The price is hard to beat. Orient is an absolutely great brand that keeps pumping out phenomenally, phenomenally valued products. Um, if this watch was three millimeters smaller, I would be over the moon. I would, I would just love this watch. I don't know if you'd be able to pull it off my wrists, uh, even when I was dead. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me, guys and let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear if there are any other budget Panda Dial or other budget chronographs that are good. I definitely am a little bit partial to mechanicals, but if it's Mecha Quartz, I can kind of deal with that too and kind of live with that. Uh, so let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this bad boy, because I'm curious. So thanks for watching as always.